thanks for the introduction. I highly appreciate to have this opportunity to be on stage here. Um, yeah, as mentioned by Ron, uh, he set the bar pretty high, so let's see if we can follow on that one. Um, I'm working for SAP, I guess for most of you, SAP well known. There we go, that's the one tool doesn't work. There we go, so SAP, I won't go through all of the numbers, but what can I say, it's big. Uh, it's very big. It's uh, 75,000 employees and further growing. Um, what is maybe more interesting for us today is the global facility management organization and portfolio. You can see that we are split in kind of five regions, whereof we mainly have three regions, which is Americas, EMEA, and APJ. And we manage about 360 headcounts in GFM only. So you can see it's a significant portfolio. Um, what is facility management at SAP? What do facility do? We had these questions, we had responses, we had suggestions to that. Normally people would react like these are the people that keeps the light and the air conditioning up and running, or security, I, I get to the reception, get a new badge. What would Hustle Plotner say? That was the question we said. And actually, we, we, we believe that we are, should be the people that provide the world-class infrastructure and real estate strategy to enable business. So we are the platform where the business runs upon. Global facility management at SAP is mainly split in three key areas, which thereof is real estate management. That's you know, the obvious things like location strategy management, city strategies, real estate sustainability is in that, and also data center um, spaces, whereof the data center is kind of a new area developed recently. We have the facility management, purely operational. It's down to operational real estate and facility management, sustainability as well, and energy management, et cetera, et cetera. Whereof I am in is the project office. We do the project management. We do the project programming. We set the guidelines and standards, and we do exchange best practices. We execute upon 15 to 20 projects each year. So imagine I do this since 2011. Um, a few projects on my portfolio so far. And we actually invest between 30 to 50 million euro capex each year. This is a number from last year. This year we are at 75 million already. So significant growth, uh, landmark projects all over the world. In EMEA, a few of them. So we're very proud to execute upon that one. How we do projects? I mean, obviously we have a structure. Um, going down to GFM project management, you can see that we have employees involved, sounding boards, ambassadors, and you can see all the special units. I won't go into detail, I just want to show that, hey, yes, we manage projects and we, we have capabilities to do so. However, for us, the question is more like, you know, what do we do this for? And I had questioned myself a few questions about what would our client um, look at a spice ad and what he would actually admire to see in the spice. So if I'd ask a CFO, financially driven, it's about efficiency. <laughs> Nobody would want to work there, I mean, but it's efficient. What would HR say to that? HR, they want to attract people, so make a fancy office. N no real performance in it possible, but it's fancy. People would love to see this and, oh yeah, I want to work here. CEO, it's about technology. I guess you know Minority Report, Tom Cruise. <laughs> really cool stuff. Again, it, difficult to work here, but it's, it's what the CEO would want. Um, a sales, it's all about impact. You know, I gotta shine. There we go, my office looks like a presidential suite. That's what I want. Okay, we can deliver that. But again, would that work for a developer? I guess not, or for an employee per se. Me as an employee, what, what do I want from a corporation? I want to get it cozy. I want to lay down and chill, especially the young generations pushing now. So the question by the end is, who is right? You, you cannot build an office with all these insights. Actually, you can, because they all are. So that's a bit the conclusion, which we came up with. And we believe that the right approach is design offices with the people, for the people. How we do it? I want to share that on an example on the landmark project in Prague. Um, this is the building. Um, one sec, there is a pointer here. 
I'm afraid to push buttons. There we go. So um, the building is kind of three section. Um, we occupy about 80% of this whole building. Unfortunately, we couldn't uh, convince the real estate to take the whole footprint. Um, however, um, SAP is already in, in first phase. I will explain a bit further more. But it's about 24,000 square meters we rent here. Next slide. There we go. The main scope of the project was actually due to recent acquisitions of SAP Ariba and Concure, we had to merge not only employees into one building, also three different companies. For sure, they're now SAP. They're running on the roof SAP, but still they have their own legacy, they have their own culture. So the main challenge was to bring these companies together, uh, these people, these communities. The problem was that due to politics, and um, you know, we've, we've, we've heard from um, previous presentation this morning that politics can play dirty games, and that's what they did. <laughs> I tell you what, there was a steering call. I remember November last year, I came first into touch with this project, the steering call with about 30 members of senior leaders of these three entities. And none of them spoke up, none of them even shared a thought. They were literally to they refused to talk to each other. They were pissed off. They were angry. They didn't like the decision coming from the board. So I was like, wow, how, how will I manage this? I mean, I gotta, I gotta bring these people together and you know, bring them to a certain excitement. They need to like this. That was the main challenge. How we did it? We started to capture the vision via a stakeholder interview. So. I'll give you more insight later on. In the interview, we asked specific questions, and it was not about spice. It was not about how you want the office to look like, how you, you know. We, we were all rather asked questions about different elements. In order to kind of measure what we do, we also created um, stakeholder analyzers. As you can see, a very technical thing. You can see the different departments, the influence, the resistance, and where they are. And the success of it, of what I show later on, is that we brought it from this picture to this one. You can see everybody on the left-hand side, perfect. The resistance is kind of gone, and they're on board. That's a bit technical. I'll show you more exciting. So we did ask questions. Fortunately, the title here is wrong. Apologies. So it was about to build kind of a definition of success to the project. So we asked, what would you look at the project as a uh, success from an employee perspective? Uh, from a personal perspective, external, financial, what's your appetite for change? So we ask questions about the metrics for the project in order for us to make it measurable. That was the first step. Second step, which I believe now it's getting really interesting, we did ask questions about culture and brand. For example, how do you see as a leader of SAP, Concure and Ariba from a culture and brand perspective? And also, you know, this is more like a linkage to how would you compare them to, you know, maybe not direct competitors, but from a people perspective, we definitely have some interaction. Um, the messages were based on the outcome that we want to get some headlines, like, you know, are we progressive? Are we evolving? Are we collaborating? In order to build a red thread, um, for the project. And the outcome was uh, huge. You can imagine 30 stakeholders each time an hour of interview, summarizing, analyzing the data. That took me quite a while, but it was done and it was done in an appropriate way. And that was a bit the outcome, like a weird uh, summary of all kind of terms which everybody repeatedly said of the stakeholders. So they had something in common and we made it transparent. So in order to get further, we brought structure in. There we go. Um, we split it into two, three sections. One was company. On the right-hand side, we have people. And in the middle, we set the office. And I'm very simplified. We actually built this in a, in a process where we said, we're going to do a company-related workshop to de define the why. We do a people workshop to define the what. And by the end, the how is obvious as a result out of these two elements, which then basically was a workshop with the technical layer like GFM, which is us, IT architect, designers, etc. I go into more details of how exactly it happened, but the why 
As I mentioned, brand, culture, vision, the what means not what do you want rather than what do we need in order to perform. It means what do we do the whole day. And then the how is the kind of solution based on these facts and elements. In the project Prague, we decided to kind of engage as part of the change management and the planning process with so-called project ambassadors. The project ambassadors were individuals out of these three entities and the different teams, and we specified kind of a scope of work, uh, uh, rules to that. Who should it be? What should they do? And I believe even more kind of important was um, what they're not supposed to be. That's actually then the next slide. But you can see here, they should well represent line of business. They should be divers. They should be kind of ambassadors. So they should be you know, people who can translate the message, etc., etc. Um, again, the definition of what they should not do, that was actually a key success to do so, because very often when you engage with people, you then have constraints about, yeah, but we want to take a decision upon you know, the, the product, or we want to take a decision upon the branding, and therefore it's a direct influence on the budget. And we made it very clear, you guys don't take budget decisions. You're not responsible for employee communication. Um, you're not responsible for the project delivery, that's our job and you're not doing the design works. For that, we appoint an architect or a designer. Um, they had to do research. So as a first stage, we requested them to do this uh, research based on these three elements. Engage with your colleagues, so obvious, question them, you know, drink a coffee, ask how actually you would like it, um, what you don't like, and that's basically the second element, keep, toss, and change. And the last one, lead, you know, go and collect some external research about best practice in the market of Czech Republic and internationally within SAP and external. All these insights were brought then into this workshop and we engaged with um, a design thinking process. Design thinking is um, a very strong in SAP, uh, a very strong element within SAP, which of we design solutions with clients and customers. Um, we have even actually built a design thinking institute, which is kind of acting independent from the SAP core business. And it's actually fantastic what happens there. And as you can see, there's just some impressions. There were a lot of work to put in and there were a lot of time invested. And how we approach, approach it is, in order to capture these problems about these three entities, and I tell you what, it was amazing what happened. We had, first of all, three workshops, individual, with Concur, with SAP, and with Ariba. So they didn't met. And what we did is we didn't really you know, speak about office again. I mean, with the leaders, we haven't spoke about office, and with these people, neither. I, I even get feedback. Why don't we design office? Um, what we first did is we did actually create personas. And the reason why we did it is I made some research as well. Prague is a very young city. The average is about 30 of the workforce. Um, they're all well educated. Um, and they have kind of a same drive. The unemployment ship in Prague is about 0%. This is amazing. This is kind of unique in the world. So people literally choose by values the company they want to work for. So we created a persona to take them away from this legacy of I am SAP, I'm Concure, I'm Ariba. And the other thing we did is a day in life, just to kind of capture what happens when you come to the office. So we split them in groups, like you would do in workshops, and you hang it up on whiteboards, and a lot of discussions, quite of an excitement uh, workshop elements. But again, there were three workshops for each entity, and they didn't met. Um, sorry, I'm a bit jumpy. No, this is good. There we go. The next step we did is we did the flower. This is about the why in the middle and the how. As we discussed, that was an element before, so we took the people and we let them create in individual groups the why and the how. Basically, again, that was the first stage. The next stage was the common workshop. So imagine we were in a room of about 50 to 60 people. And the first thing that happened, Ariba people were over there, Concure there, and SAP there. And they were like, we don't talk to them. That was amazing. I was like, Jesus, guys, I hope it works. And actually it did work because we did like an exhibition of the personas and the different days in life and the different cultures. And we ask them to literally spend two hours to discover each other and to uh, kind of estimate to who it belongs. And we've been kind of test, I mean, approached with 
you guys cheated on these elements. You created them on your own just to trick us out. And we said, no, we didn't. It's you. So what happens is actually that by the end, in this room, it was kind of a, almost like a party. People started to get connected. Hey, oh, that's you. That's so cool. Oh, I'd love to do this as well, blah, blah, blah. So it's about relationship. And people, by the end, came together on their own. Um, by the end, we made mixed groups. Means we took them out of their own kind of silos of the entities, and we let them design the common areas of the building. So it's amazing. We had 12 of these sheets, as you can see here, where you can see, like, you know, this is uh, kitchen nets, uh, relax area, all these elements. So really, beside the workstation and the performance space, and I can tell you, I could overlay these 12, and they look the same. So the office design was done, and I just handed out to the architect, and he is doing his job. Um, I want to share now a video, and this video is quite of a unique element as part of the change because with this video we created a momentum which by the end helps us to kind of surf the wave of change management till the final delivery and behind of that. And actually what happened, you remember these stakeholders? They didn't speak to each other. They still didn't. We did all this workshop and they still were kind of quiet to each other. And the last workshop was on a Friday, the same day as a stakeholder call. I actually said I can't do the stakeholder call. But while the stakeholder call happened, I informed my boss, hey, I'll dial in by a webcam. I want to share something with you. There's a surprise. And actually what I did, you'll see it in the video, I requested these kind of mixed groups to use this opportunity to send a message to their stakeholders. Whatever it is, I didn't give any guidance. Just provide them a message of what you want to tell them about the project and what is your view, what is your vision, what is your brand. And actually, this is what happened. I, I received calls after that from, I believe, three of these leaders. I, I, I won't say the names now. They were in tears. Can you imagine? So what we did here is we created impact based on emotions. I mean, it's a bit, 
Sorry, Ed, about that. It's a bit the American approach, maybe, right? Like, there we go, I got the red card. I got some more to show, but I run through. So basically, we created a momentum, and we actually used this momentum to continue on the change management. There was furnishing mock-up, same approach. I'll go through the video, means I click it through. That's the end result. And the basically what I want to say is I have built such offices in the past. They look same, maybe kind of same excitement. There is a lot of stuff in which is cool. But without this whole change management, we wouldn't get the same recognition of success. The same result without change management would not lead to the success. Basically, get stakeholders clear guidance. Do involve the people in a guided form. We don't like just free form. We guide them aligned with the red thread. Set the expectations, be transparent and tell the truth. Keep the momentum, inform the people regularly and make sure you not only listen, also deliver. I guess that's a bit the key take I want to take. And uh, phase two is now one month to go. We deliver the next 14,000 square meters and it's amazing. It's really amazing. Thank you. <laughs>